started and all. What is, what is the other sister name? M.W. Uh, that's Mia Warner. Mia yes. Warner. Oh. That's Mia. And um, uh, that's Mia as well. I'm going to uh, just pause this for a second. Oh, keep out, Mia. Would you open this up in prayer? Yes. Father, we're so grateful that you have brought us all together. We are your children, and we are very hungry to know who you are. We acknowledge the Holy Spirit to be our teacher, the one who will lead us into all truth and revelation of who Jesus is, even in the precious name of Adonai. We want to know Adonai because he lives in us. And we want the Holy Spirit to teach us and to open up our eyes and to open up our ears to hear the word of the Lord this morning. We are thankful that you have given unto us, Barry, as a conduit through which all of us can connect, that we might connect even to Christ Jesus himself. We are thankful for the body of Christ worldwide. We accept you. We, re we acknowledge you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, into each of our hearts, into each of our environments, wherever we are throughout this world, to sit at your feet and to learn about you, Adonai. We bless you and praise you and lift up your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, this is just a really special <coughs> word. And, um, you know, growing up, I, I, we're all coming from uh, different perspectives, different countries, different regions, different beginnings. Maybe some people were raised in a home of godly believers. I came from the Jewish perspective. So I'm going to speak from there um, because Adonai uh, is a word that most Jewish people are familiar with. Um, and I brought, um, I don't have... Uh, my regular little prayer book, but I've got the another Bible in Hebrew, and I just will hold it up. But you'll see. Um, let me get to the Hebrew over here, and right here is the word Adonai. It's Yud Hey Vav Hey. I think that's, and I'm going to show you another thing that I could go through my prayer book. And I could recognize Yud He Vav He in Hebrew. Uh, let me bring this um, screen share. I'm hoping that we'll be able to do this. Um, pulling up my finder. Oh, wait, it's on my desktop. Although it's being a little bit um, cantankerous, just a minute. Well, let me come out of uh, screen share because it's not coming for me here. Files. Sorry about this. Okay, I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me uh, just reduce this a little bit. Come back to uh, sharing the screen. Hello, Miss Linda and uh, here we go. Okay. You see the Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. Um, growing up, anytime they said Adonai, Adonai, I knew that that was Adonai. I could find that word in um, my, my prayer book. And I just knew that it was Adonai. I really did not understand what it meant. Um, and in Hebrew, we've got the Yud. That's the smallest letter. We've got vowels underneath, the He, the Vav. 
pay. Now, many people, I'm going to stop sharing this, uh, believe that this is Jehovah. And let me go back to there again. <laughs> the reason, if you look at the very first letter, the Yud here, some people say that that is a J. And I'm going to talk about the history behind this word in, in just a few minutes. But the Yud, some people look at that as a J. So if you've got a J, H, V, A, it's easy to see. Jehovah. Can you see that? I kind of want to take it slowly, but I want you to see how we could have gotten Jehovah from Adonai. Am I going too quickly here? No. Nope. Okay, good. And let me make sure I'm off a of screen share because I am actually looking for um, a document here. But this word, the yud hey vav hey, is what we call the tetragrammaton. <laughs> Can you say five syllables? Tetragrammaton. Can you say that? Tetragrammaton. Right. Very good. Thank you very much. Now, when we go to Israel, sometimes we hear about the word. We'll hear Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. And that means Baruch is blessed. Hashem is the name. So we hear Baruch Hashem a lot. They won't say Baruch Adonai. Okay, it's Baruch Hashem. Blessed is the name. As a Jew growing up, we knew that we just called the Lord Adonai. Now, why, why is that? The word in Hebrew, let me come back to the um, screen share. And I don't want to get too crazy here. Okay. Okay. Adonai, this in Hebrew is not Adonai. This is yud Hey vav Hey. The tetragrammaton is the big scholarly word to denote that this is the unspeakable word of God. I mean, the name of God. Uh, it's so holy that maybe some of you have seen uh, G hyphen D in writings or L hyphen R D. Have you seen that? Yes. Okay. This is because the thing is so sacred. This Yud He Vav He, they won't even say it. They won't even spell it. I have an article um, that I just found online that talked about even on a computer screen, they will not put. G O D. They'll put G hyphen D. Even though the word is pixel dots, it's not even written out. That because either computer screens refresh themselves so many times, or you might delete an email. If you delete an email with G O D to the Orthodox Jew, that is like defaming or erasing. The name of God. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. Okay, now in Hebrew, uh, the name Lord is it's A D O N. Let me see. Um, I'm not going to research it. Let me, I could, but I don't want to. But this is, I want you to see this that this is, can you see my little plus cursor? Yes. yes. Okay. This is the Yud, but many people say that, you know, like 300 AD on Ford is the J. I don't know where, I think maybe from the Spanish language, I don't know. 
you know, if you say Jesus, it's like hey instead of J. But here, this is a Yud. It's not a J. But here is the H. There is the V. And there is the H. So if this was considered a J, do you see Jehovah? Yeah. Jehovah. Okay. Now, that is why we have songs that we have, you know, in the presence of Jehovah. Uh, Jehovah Jireh. Even the song Jehovah Jireh is not correct. Let me see if I can find it in my book. It's Adonai Yireh, the Lord, my provider. Let me see if I can uh, find it. It's, um, um, no, I can't find it in my book. Maybe if someone's got the book, they can find it in there. But Adonai Yireh is the name Jehovah Jireh in proper Hebrew, Adonai Yireh. It still means the Lord provides or provider, but there's no J in Hebrew. And I really can't say that enough. So this word is so special that even saying Jehovah or Yehovah out loud is, cons that's not, it's not right. This is such a holy word that the word is never recited by a Jewish person, Jehovah, or excuse me, Jehovah. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I just happened to pull up. This is the little book that we use for um, Passover. And it's a Haggadah, and you go through it, uh, and you, re you go through the story of the Passover. But I want you to see... Let me see. I want to make sure I can get up here. See this yud yud there? Can you see it? That is also like yeah. Okay, that's also Adonai. It's also the when I see that, I would say Adonai, although this is farther, this is about as close to Adonai in Hebrew as the Yehovah. I know it's crazy, and I, I had actually forgotten about this yud-yud combination here until I pulled out my book. Now, I started researching why is this yud-yud used, and I have not been able to find it. The closest that I see now, I don't know if it is because this was published in um, probably like in the 50s, maybe even the 40s. This little Haggadah, um, 1923. But um, now when we see yud heh vav He here, we just automatically in a prayer book will say Adonai. But that's not the way Adonai looks uh, written out. Okay. Am I making sense so far? Yeah. Okay. I just probably the big thing is that I want you to know that this name is so sacred that the Jews will not say yud heh vav heh Yehovah. You might see different spellings. You might see Yahweh. You might see Yahweh. Just so many different things. But truly, yud hey vav hey is it's what what we use to say the Lord. Uh, Lord. Now, I knew about this word. I I knew about it in my prayer books. It meant nothing to me until I came to faith in Yeshua Jesus. Does that make sense? Yes. And as I look throughout my Bible now, and I see L, you know, L, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, it takes on a whole different meaning now. Growing up, and you all probably know that too, before you came to faith in yes. Jesus you knew about God. God was out there somewhere. 
maybe God knew you, maybe he meant something to you, but, um, uh, but he wasn't personal. He wasn't personal. But if you walk yeah. through Psalms, you can see the psalmist, whether it's David, whether it's the sons of Korah, uh, whoever wrote the psalm, because there are several writers who wrote psalms, you will see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, which designates Adonai, which designates personal God. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, I really... I really want to make sure that that people get this because for someone that is law abiding, Torah abiding, unless they get born again by the Holy Spirit, they won't really have that personal knowing that God is intimately involved with their life as a believer. And I thought I'd stop here and just see if anybody would like to share their own personal, uh, you know, a short two minute story as how God turned the light on in your spirit to show you the Lord as an intimate, personal God with you. Anyone? Anyway. I would be happy to share the testimony. My husband was overseas at the time in Okinawa serving with the military and I was at home with my pregnancy of my second child. And she was born in September, but in October and previously for six years, I had been going to Bible studies through the military's presentations and Bible, personal Bible studies. And I just thought I really knew God. I mean, I was going to Bible studies and I was enjoying being with other people who were curious and hungry for the things of God and wanted to learn the scriptures. Mm -hmm. But I was watching a television program after Sally was born, our second and last child. <clears throat> and it was a Charles Stanley presentation about what Jesus did for me. And when he spread his hands out at the very end, like this, and said, this is how much Jesus loves you. Well, that's wonderful. I turned the television off, and I checked on Sally and our firstborn, and it was 10 o'clock at night. And then I went into the shower. I wasn't thinking about what I had just heard. I just stepped into the shower, and I looked up into the water flow, and it was as though a curtain over my mind had separated and I saw love looking at me. He didn't have a face, he didn't have a body, but I knew it was God who is love. And I could not stop crying for 45 minutes in the shower. My hot water turned cold. I was heaving so deeply inwardly. I, I knew I had met him but I didn't know all the ramifications that that meant. It was my beginning of my relationship with the Lord in a very personal way. That's it. That is so beautiful. I love that because it encourages, mm -hmm. not only me, it encourages us about our first love. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, Mia. I mean, you're welcome. Um, other, other, anyone else want to share? Because this, I want this, I don't want it to just always be me talking. And some people, my, I don't know, if someone's trying to talk and they're uh, um, uh, muted. But anyway, um, you know, God becomes personal. And on uh, this, um, I'm going to come back to the screen share. Is that uh, in Psalm 83, verse 18, let them know that you, whose name is the Lord, that you alone are the most high over all the earth. And I'm just going to read this. This name, Adonai, Lord in all caps, is too sacred to even pronounce as it really is. And that's why I want to continue to come back to because 
uh, Adon in Hebrew is an Aleph, a D, an O, and an N, and then an ending. Okay, and this is a Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. So, uh, and then what happened is that the Masoretes back in about the third century, they decided, okay, well, we want to say something when we say this name, but we're not going to say Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. So that's how Adon, which is Lord, little L O R D, uh, that is how that name became uh, interchanged for Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. Even today, 21st century, it's too sacred to pronounce even as it really is. Lord, your name is all we need in this life to get by. We don't need wealth, fame, power. All we need is you. You give us the fulfillment within that satisfies as nothing else ever will. How beautiful is your name? And it isn't that great that all of us as believers, we know his name. I don't know if there's anything more precious on this earth than knowing that the God of all the earth knows you privately. Not only that, because it's the strength for today, but when we go on to life eternal, he's going to be with us. He's going to like translate us from this life to the next. Don't ask me how it's done, whether we go to sleep or whatever. But even like my husband and I spent uh, like six days with Doug and me in Hawaii in January. I mean, even as special as Hawaii is, even as, and it was so visually beautiful, eye candy everywhere. Even as how special Israel is, eternity can't even be described. So Yeshua, the Lord, Adonai, gives us the fulfillment within that satisfies like nothing else ever will. How beautiful is his name? That your holy language, and this is another thing about Hebrew, you cannot curse in Hebrew. Um, now you can say son of an unborn woman, or you can say prostitute, zona, but there's no dirty words. They use dirty words from English. Uh, <laughs> and okay, they don't use dirty words, uh, or there are some Arabic words, but Hebrew is so sacred. You cannot curse in that language. And how appropriate that God gave, you know, I mean, Moses and he conversed face to face. And Moses, you know, he transcribed the words of God. And it was in Hebrew that that happened. And so um, I don't know, uh, somebody is calling me and I'm going to, uh, but anyway, um, I'm, let me stop this and then. It's, of course, it has to be spam, you know, a spam call. But um, let me come back here. Uh, that God's la language, the Lashon Kodesh, and I've talked with this, this will be the third time, the third study we've had. Lashon eh, is the tongue. Oh, sorry about this. And then Kodesh is uh, the Hebrew. And... Um, I, I'm trying to figure out, let me stop. I'm really sorry about this interruption. This is all spam and uh, they're just, how dare they disrupt this study? <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, the Lashon, can you say Lashon? L-A-S-H-O-N, Lashon. Lashon. Kodesh. 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 That means holy, holy tongue. You know, we want to have a holy tongue. Um, we don't want to bite and devour each other or even our own selves. Uh, someone shared with me something uh, that she had gotten from a study in the past day that Adam and Eve were in the garden and when they ate of the forbidden fruit and they saw their sight was changed from instead of seeing everything beautiful and positive to seeing things negative, and when I heard that, I thought that explains how at times I can wake up like grumpy cat, negative, and I don't even want to be like that. But I then I get encouraged in 1 Corinthians 15, where it says the natural man is first, 
than the spiritual. We want to be spiritual. We want to have that Lashon Kodesh, that holy tongue. And God's name is sacred. This name, Adonai, Yerevavhe, Adonai, is so precious. It's so sacred that there isn't an English word. Jehovah comes close. Yahovah, Yahvah comes close. But but nothing is. And so that's why we use the substitute, Adonai, to say my Lord as personal Lord. And may we honor your life in Yeshua in us as we journey onward, desiring to do your will. Blessed is the name, Adonai. And so when we go to Israel, we hear from time to time, you know, and that's why I share it, uh, Baruch Hashem, when we go through uh, the hospital in Jerusalem, there's a lady there. I think she's had 14 children and she's the lady. And, and Mia, you met her in 2006 and she's still there in 2020. Uh, she has a wig, she's Orthodox, and she goes around saying, Baruch Hashem. She'll see people in the hallway, Baruch Hashem, blessed is the name. Perhaps that is a little bit more uh, with informality, being informal and saying, you know, God bless you, or God is good, uh, that they say in, in Judaism. So, um, you know, it was the Masoretes that took the Hebrew, Aleph, Dalid, uh, the Vav, and the Nun, Adon, Lord, and they put the little vowels under so that we could say Adonai um, and express his name. And so I just thought I'd ask again, does anyone else want to share anything? You know, I, you know, I, 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 I mean, I could go on and on and on. Um, and one of the more profound, I'll, I'll share one of the times that was really special when God showed up to me in a tangible way. Uh, it was 1987. I had finished my graduate degree a couple years prior. I was living in Dallas. I lost my job. But then I was offered a job in uh, that I would have to move to Houston. And uh, they were, uh, Georgia Pacific offered me the job. And so I knew I was going to have to move. So I boxed up everything in my little house. It was the first house I ever bought here in Dallas, Texas. It was $60,000, you know, mm -hmm. so I think my payment was like $500 a month, which was still mm -hmm. a lot of money back then, but yeah. I boxed up everything. People had come by. Yeah, we want to buy your house. That fell through. Yeah, we want to rent your house. That fell through. But I knew that um, I needed to spend Christmas Eve in Dallas with a family that had kind of nurtured me through my Christian walk. And then I was going to move to Houston on December the 26th. Well, it was a rainy, yucky day on December the 24th. My phone went out. I had called the phone company to come and hook it up. And they showed up at about uh, 2.30. And they were working on my telephone so that I wouldn't be alone on Christmas Day because one of my brothers at that time was a believer. I had friends. You know how you talk to friends on Christmas Day. And I was planning to move on the next day. What about 4 o'clock in the afternoon? I heard a knock at the door and i had had a for rent sale out in front of my house and the man was there and again it's pouring rain he said my wife and i just sold our house we need to find a house immediately to rent is your house still available and i said sure and he came in and he loved it and he said well i'm going to bring my wife back by at six o'clock i said okay and i was talking with the phone man and I said, thank you for hooking up my phone. I knew that the Lord would not want me to be alone on Christmas. So he left, the phone man left, and the man who was looking at the house said, are there any churches around here? And I said, yes, there's several. And then he shared with me, well, I heard you said, mention the Lord, the Lord, the personal Lord. Uh, are you a believer? And I said, yes. And he said that he and his wife were, they had been praying about selling their house. They sold it immediately. I said, well, I've been praying about, you know, who's to buy this, you know, rent this house, whatever. And he says, well, I'm going to bring my wife by. At six o'clock, they came in. By 6.30, y'all, I had a sign. I didn't even have a lease. I had a sign. He had a lease in his car. It was in real estate. I had a <laughs> lease. 
the first month's rent and a security deposit. So this was, I, you know, I could celebrate Christmas with my friends and then on Christmas, the day after Christmas. So I just share that because the Lord showed up in a personal way. So I'm going to be quiet now. And I know that someone's got a testimony here. I'm going mute. Don't <laughs> So I came to know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord in 1974 when I am studying my agriculture in agriculture. That's University. okay. You got a minute? Okay, no. so it's uh, in that second cabinet from the hallway, you know, where there's oh. the bank of cabinet in the, um, I believe the second drawer, and it's called the... Um, Sunshine Well House. Then you're not on mute. <laughs> well, that was not the septic. That was, um, well, which septic? <laughs> Barry, you're, you're not, you're muted. Sister, Sister Barry, you put on the mic. Barry, you're muted. Barry, mic is muted. You're muted, Barry. Sister Barry, your your mic is muted. You put on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you can now. Go ahead, Doctor Saint Yanam. He's from India. <laughs> okay, okay. So after my uh, born again experience, Holy Spirit started working in me and leading me all through these years. So when I'm a, a naturally at, uh, gifted by God from my childhood. I'm a singer in the basical. So after a born again experience, the singing with the Holy Spirit guidance and before born again experience, singing without Holy Spirit, I make a, a lot of difference when I stood up in front of the church, in front of the congregation. So I felt several times the Holy Spirit is uh, backing me. I'm with you. You go ahead. I'm with you. Go ahead. So uh, one way, my body is showing. And internally, Holy Spirit is comforting me. Be strong and sing. So slowly, uh, when I pick up the scripture reading and uh, develop myself in the scriptures, started giving witness, started giving preaching, gospel to the, my friends, gospel to the outreach, re, outreaches to the other colleges. And when I came to the churches, Revival and Development, CRRD, for which conference uh, Dr. Berry came to India in 2011. Before that also, while I'm preaching the word of God, Holy Spirit, I felt several times, Holy Spirit is with me because uh, devils are in front of me sitting in the church. Devils are in front of me in the congregation. So in front of devils, I have to speak as a, a child of God. So internally, I am feeling a lot uh, afraid of the speaking. But my Holy God, Spirit of Holy Spirit is uh, strengthening me. I am with you. Go ahead. There are several times this type of experience. God is with me, uh, strengthening me, standing in front of me, standing behind me, right inside my heart. This is my spiritual experience. So all through the years, he's a faithful Lord, he's a wonderful comforter, and he, he is leading my life. I am, all through my life, I am really thankful to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is my uh, personal, like this, so many experiences are there, just one or two I'm doing, singing and also preaching. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I mean, it's encouraging. He's on the, totally on the other side of the world from us in America. And uh, it was a long trip to see him, uh, but yet it was so special. Uh, uh, I had to fly through Dubai and I had just gone to Israel and uh, I had a Talit in my bag and a calendar 
uh, an Israel ca a biblical calendar. And um, I was very much afraid. And that's not unlike, you know, they've got the Israel UAE um, agreement going forward now. But back in 2011, I had many people praying for me because I was so afraid. And even transferring, I thought, oh my God, they're going to see that, uh, you know, I was just in Israel on my passport. And they're not going to let me in, but, but God gave me favor. And Dr. St. Yonadan, they uh, got a, a wonderful place for me to stay that had air conditioning. <laughs> and uh, but the hunger uh, for uh, the people's hunger that they had, like y'all on this call, for the Hebrew, for a Jew to come and, and teach them. Uh, it was just so special. I'd, I'd never experienced that. And, um, and I really oh. am thankful to God for him. Yeah, our uh, believers, our believers, even now, they remember you, Sister Barry, because well, yeah. you have uh, explained so beautifully well, it, and, about the uh, gates of the Jerusalem, Jerusalem temple and the uh, walls and the gates. Yes, yes. So Nehemiah. The, Nehemiah. Uh, the, and yeah, this is... So yes. you spoke from the Nehemiah. Yes, this is neat mm -hmm. about Nehemiah. We say yes. Nehemiah, but Nehemiah. his name in Hebrew is Nehemiah. And if you look at NHM, Nahum, you know, we oh. have that book in the Bible. Nahum is what we say, but in Hebrew, it is Nahum. And in Hebrew, that means comfort. Where did oh, Jesus you. minister? Jesus ministered at Kafar Nahum. Kafar is village. Nahum is comfort, the, the village of comfort. I think that is so beautiful that that was his environment. That was where he ministered. That was uh, his place of like, belongingness, village Kafar Nahum. The Hebrew language is just so beautiful. Uh, and we, we only can touch on it a glimmer here uh some believe and i do that when we get to heaven we'll be speaking hebrew don't ask me how but in zechariah zachariah uh it does say and zachar means to remember yah is god god remembers in the book of zechariah it does say that we'll speak one language now again I'm not prophesying. That is not my gift. I'm just making mention. And some rabbis, including one of my cousins who has passed on, he was a, a Jewish Orthodox rabbi in Israel, believe that. But we can see, I mean, Hebrew is so, it's such a beautiful language. Even, and Yeshua, he spoke, you know, Hebrew and uh, um, ministered in Kepharnachum. That is why when you go to Israel, it's just, it's profound, it's beyond description because uh, you sense the, the presence of the Lord there in a way. Grand Canyon's beautiful, you see an ocean that's beautiful, but there's nothing like Israel. Okay, let's be quiet. Yeah, yeah. After Anything? 19 years, after 19 years, once again, I am hearing more Hebrew words in your message. <laughs> oh yeah, I love, I love Hebrew. I love to bring it out, it, it excites me. And um, um, so, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you what we'll study next week, but does anyone, would anyone else like to testify? I have many testimonies. Um, I didn't think any, I always think my tes testimonies are not important, but I will share this one. Um, and I think this one came to mind because I'm waiting on the Lord um, uh, for something. And, um, I lived, I, I'm from Narra Falls, New York, and um, and growing up in Narra Falls, it, it's always been good, but I always wanted to leave, and um, I would just inquire of the Lord all the time, can I leave? I, mean, it, I always wanted to know where I was going to go, and et cetera. My friends and cousins were moving, and I just didn't see a door open for me. So the Lord encouraged me to just, uh, you know, just to be quiet, to be content. And where I was at and be still and I did and time went on and I'm living in our you know working in Buffalo New York and I don't have a car and I will always take uh, the bus uh, 
uh, as transportation to get to work. And my funds were, was not all that great as well, but I, I was making it. And um, so I get into a cab one day because I don't have any funds and um, I need funds to go to Buffalo to work on the bus. <laughs> so I figure I'll take the cab to the bank. So I took the cab to the bank and I asked the, the, the cab driver to wait and he said, okay. And I walk up to the ATM, it was called a Tilly back then. <laughs> and I walked up to the Tilly and I put my card in and I had no funds. And I was so distraught. And I just couldn't figure out what had happened. And all of a sudden, I just turned my head and I was blind by this light where I couldn't see the taxi. I couldn't see the city hall because it was uh, across the street from the city hall. I couldn't see anything. And I just knew that the Lord said at that time, it's time. It's time to go. It's time to move. And I'm, I was a Baptist uh, at that time, and I was preparing to go to a Baptist convention. But right there at that, that, that time, I said to myself, okay, but what do I do now? <laughs> How do I tell this cab I don't have any money? So I went to the taxi, and uh, it was more dramatic than that. But I went to the taxi, and I wish I can see what the taxi driver saw. Because when I went to go open up the door and get in to let him know I don't have any money, he said, you don't have any money. And I said, no, I don't have any money. I'm so sorry. And I was trying to think of what I can do. And he said, it's okay. Where do you need to go? He had saw whatever was going on with me. And he knew, okay, let me help her, right? And so he even asked me if I wanted money. <laughs> To make a long story short, I got money from him to get to work and come back <laughs> home from, Niagara, from Buffalo and Niagara Falls. And I called my uncle, the other uncle, who was Church of God in Christ. The other one I was going to the convention was is the Baptist preacher. But I called the one in Church of God in Christ and, um, and I asked him, was he still going to Atlanta? And he said, yeah. And just to make a long story short, he said, I'm going, you need to go, and you need to tell my brother, you're not going to the convention. He's going to get upset, and you need to go on this trip. And I'm like, why? He said, because you want to leave Niagara Falls, so you need to go and go on interview. I, so to make a long story short again, I told my uncle, the other one was mad. I got in the car, took one week of clothing. Everything in my apartment was paid for. I had just bought new stuff. Everything was just perfect to me, but um, I left everything, went there for, and never came back. I never <laughs> came back from where I'm living today in Atlanta, Georgia, to Niagara Falls because my uncle was determined to tell his son, which is my cousin, don't let Kim go back because if she go back, she won't find her way back, right? Because you let things get in the way. So I say that, and I think the Lord brought that to my remembrance because I'm waiting and he's still telling me just be still and be content. And when we want something, he will do it. If, especially if it's, if it's good purpose for our, our lives, he will do it. So um, that one to me was, I was very impressed with that. And I, to this day, I wish I can see what that taxi man saw. <laughs> <laughs> he just knew, oh, okay. Really, you'll so, see heaven. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully yeah. that. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Kim. That is a beautiful testimony. Um, it's very special because as I look at the little names on this call, people know me from here, but there's almost as many people who know me before I got married. And I didn't get married till age 62. So it's really special. Um, you know, when, when God brings to remembrance something like that, because I know you, you're you in my recent past, not in my past past. I met you yes. in, when we were in Atlanta, and so uh, mm -hmm. uh, last year. And so um, mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. That's encouraging. But you'll find out in heaven if that man's there, you'll find out. I really do believe that... Um, yeah. You know, the answers that we don't have on this side, we'll have them all on the other side. And mm -hmm. uh, 
Would anyone else like uh, one more person like to share before uh, we close? Anyone? Barry? Hi, yes. It's Linda. Hi, uh, Linda, yes. I, I was just thinking of all the times that the devil has tried to take my life. One stands out, I guess there's probably about five different times, but one stands out when uh, we were on a road trip in Arkansas and we just left and got on the road and wasn't, you know, my speed wasn't up, up very high. We just passed a, a highway patrol and probably less than a half a mile down the road, I'm driving and I see this limb leave, you know, out of the corner of my right eye. And I just said, help me God, help me God. And I, I hit the gas really fast. And it was a humongous, huge tree that was falling that I saw out of the corner of my right eye. Mm. Mm. Our car was totaled, but we were safe. Wow. So I know God watches over me. Praise God. But wherever I am. Amen. Wow. Um, some of you know uh, Jonathan Kahn, and he shares that in his testimony, that he barely missed getting hit by a train and it was uh the way that god showed up in his life i mean some of us can catch our breath and even hyperventilating hyperventilate thinking about those near misses so mm -hmm. but praise god we're here today amen praise amen. god you know we're healthy uh again as i said at the beginning i'll say it now thank you for coming so far to come to this meeting i know some of you have traveled so far to join us today maybe 10 feet <laughs> and uh, uh if there is one thing i give you know i give thanks to god for this test uh the uh technology amen he joined yeah. by someone on the other side of the world and also someone in <laughs> red oak nancy who's just a few miles from me and pat hudson and yeah. um, so I'm going to close in prayer, but um, as, as we do it, I hadn't done this before, but I'd like to just ask corporately, um, uh, how can we pray for you? I, and I always pray for family salvation, so that's like for everybody. But how can we pray for you? And I know Dr. Santyanadam sent me something. Yes, yes. Yeah. And daughter. So, uh, pray for my daughter. Today she is celebrating 39th birthday in Chicago. Yes. So pray for Josna Victoria. Okay. And also pray for the CRRB, Churches Reconstruction, Revival and Development Ministry in India. Pray okay. for them. Great. I'm writing these down. Um, others, other than health? I have a praise. Mm -hmm. Yes, Nancy. Uh, last week I was stung by a wasp twice and I had an allergic reaction to it. Mm. And praise God, I'm healed. Amen. That's huge. Yeah. 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 I have a son uh, and his wife in Alanya, Turkey. They were able to get out of Turkmenistan um, probably in June sometime. They are teachers with Quality School International. They were able to get out. They're on a 90-day visa in Turkey. They are online teaching the children in Turkmenistan while they are in Turkey. Wow. wow. They do not know where they will go after the 90 day visa is over. Um, I have a mama's heart 
for my son and his wife Amen. to turn to the Lord at this time. Amen. To seek his face, perhaps for the first time more diligently, to take the steps that the Lord is preparing for them to take. Whether they go back into a nation, Turkmenistan, which is not allowing anybody to come in right now, or whether it is to go to Athens or whatever place God sends them, I don't know. I don't know the way of the Lord for them, but I know he knows how to direct them his way. And I am satisfied in knowing that he can do that. So my prayer is for and asking the Lord to direct their steps first to him. And secondly, that they would hear him and go in the direction he is sending them. Mm. Amen. What is his name, your son name? Or the first letter, Mia, only since this is on Facebook too. And I don't want to reveal anything oh. that would put them in danger. It is A God, and God, God. A, A and A. Thank you. Pat, were you going to say something? Um, I don't know if you can hear me. But, yeah. Um, okay, pray for Millie. She had a biopsy done again, and she's been in pain. So just pray uh, continued healing on her in Yeshua's name. Okay, Millie S. Okay. I'd like to pray, ask for prayer, Barry, for um, some recent health issues that I'm having. Okay. I mean, they're not major like some people's, but for me, I mean, I think it's indicative of maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a problem. Um, just if you could pray for, for health. Sure. Got it. I'm like the lady when she said, I can't see her name on here, really, but um, when she says you have a mama's heart, I, I identify with that as a mother. Uh, you, you, you pray for your, your, your children. So I would like to uh, request prayer for my children. It's particularly children. I only have one child, but I have grandchildren for her. And I live with my daughter, and I want to move. So... <laughs> I want to move mm -hmm. and, and see now the Lord is showing me that it's going to be very hard for her because that's like a cuss word to her when I bring it up. But I only moved here to help. Now I need to move out. But uh, I, I guess my prayer is I know the Lord's going to work it out for me, but that he just works it out for everybody and um, that she's a stronger person at that time in every area of her life. Mm -hmm. And her name is Kashi. How do you spell that? Like the cereal. <laughs> K-A-S-H-I. It's Kashi Mara. I just call her Kashi. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Others? Okay. Okay, well, I'll, I'll close in prayer, and I really thank you for taking the time. But Abba Father, we come and we acknowledge you. We, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for showing up and being personal in our lives. Lord, thank you that you know our private needs, our heart cry, our joys. Father, we thank you that, again, with you, the best is yet to come, and as we go from this place, Lord, give us wisdom. Uh, uh, as, we, as we go forward, Father, we, we love our families and we pray for their salvation. Um, we include prayer for Josna, Dr. Santyanadam's daughter, whose birthday is today. They live in Chicago, and I pray that you bless them, protect them, her husband and son. And Lord, I'm just so thankful for the privilege of getting to know Josta as well, Father, and, and bless also Dr. St. Yanadem's ministry uh, and give him wisdom and good connections going forward. 
and Lord also for um, Mia and uh, her her son and daughter in law A and A is there in Turkey now and yeah. Father as as Kim expressed as Mia has expressed and I'm sure others silently really oh, want their children to know you in a personal way in a real way um, at, be, because we're not going to last forever and so the greatest thing that we can give our children or pray for them is that for their salvation father so please show up for a and a and we we trust you yeah. lord thank you uh that when you just give us enough light for the next step lord that's always enough and we ask for peace too yeah. for the parents or the grandparents who are wondering about children and grandchildren's future like kim what about she wants to move but her daughter needs her but Lord, you work in this situation and, and we trust you. And Father, we, we thank you for Nancy, her testimony of getting stung and, and that she's doing fine because that can be really frightening. And we thank you that you showed up there. And then for Millie, who's ailing, Lord, uh, we pray that you'll just continue to do your healing, bring her through this. I pray that you give the doctors wisdom and their a diagnosis and treatment with medicine that Millie can experience total restoration. Father, please help in that. And also for Susan Mills, who's also dealing with some situations regarding her health, give her wisdom, give uh, her wisdom to see the doctor, not see the doctor, what to take, not to take. Lord, we, we you'll bring healing. Your Adonai Rofecha, the Lord who heals you. And so we trust that you'll show up. Give Susan Wisdom and Patience as well, Father. And uh, also for Kim's daughter, Kashi. And look for the unspoken needs here, because I'm sure that there are so many and people who are a little bit hesitant to speak up. So, Father, thank you that you are in the midst. Father, we uh, thank you for keeping the virus from us. We pray that you'll continue to do that in our loved ones' lives as well. Give us wisdom. We thank you for this technology that allows us to be in each other's homes and yet we're close. And we, we learn more about you, Lord, your, your name that even though to the Jew it's unutterable, it's so sacred, Lord, to us it's the best name, Lord Adonai, our, our, our Savior, our Jesus. We love you. Thank you for the blessings you're going to give to us as we go through this week. Lord, you always show up. You're always on time. We love you. Thank you for your provision to us, Lord. Uh, and just as I like to uh, close, since this is Friday and everybody Shabbat in India, uh, with the ironic blessing in Hebrew and then in English from Numbers 6, 24 through 26. Yivarechach Adonai v'yishmarecha Ya er Adonai penavelecha v'chunecha Yisa Adonai panavelecha v'yasem lecha shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and give you grace. May the Lord shine his face upon you and give you peace. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach Seha Elohim. In the name of Jesus the Messiah, the Lamb of God. Amen. 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 Next week, we're going to be looking at the word uh, afflicted in Hebrew. He was afflicted. And so uh, the Lord bless you all to be continued. Thank you. Okay. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Oh, Mary, I love you. Oh. Bye. 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 Bye.